Hi there, I hope you're doing well and welcome in my new video about Apache Airflow. In this video, I would like to talk about the external task sensor, which is a widely used sensor and very often misunderstood. So let me give you a better idea of how does it work. So what is the external task sensor? Well, basically it waits for a task in a different DAG to complete before succeeding as well. But let me show you a quick schema so that it will be easier to understand. So let's say we have two DAGs. DAG A and DAG B. Where DAG A contains the sensor with another task, let's say task 2, and DAG B has a task, let's say task 1. Let me change the color quickly. Like that. So basically the DAG A will have the sensor starting first and it will wait for the task task 1 in the DAG B to succeed before executing the task 2 in the same DAG. When the task 1 will succeed, the sensor will succeed as well, and so the task 2 will be triggered. That's how the external task sensor works. Now there are two things that the external task sensor assumes. First, you shouldn't trigger manually the DAG B in order to get the sensor working. Then the most important thing to remember is that DAG A and DAG B should run on the same execution date, meaning they should have the same schedule interval. So if DAG A is set to run every 5 minutes, well, DAG B should have the same schedule interval as well. We will see that the external task sensor allows you to change this with the parameter execution delta. Alright, let me show you the two DAGs we are going to use as an example. So we have the master DAG and the slave DAG. The master DAG is where the external task sensor is implemented. As you can see here, we first have to make the import in order to get the sensor. And then in the DAG definition, we instantiate an external task sensor object with three parameters. The task ID, which must be unique. The external DAG ID, corresponding to the DAG ID of the DAG where the task we are waiting for is. And the external task ID, corresponding to the task ID of the task we are waiting for. So basically, we are waiting for the task T1 in the DAG slave underscore DAG. And that's what you can see here where the task T1 is in the DAG slave underscore DAG to finish before moving to the next task, which is last underscore task in the DAG master underscore DAG. Finally, notice that the master DAG and the slave DAG share the same scheduling interval as you can see here and here which is set to 5 minutes. Ok, so from the Airflow UI, let's turn on the toggle of the DAG master underscore DAG to start scheduling it. If you refresh the page, the DAG run is triggered. And as you can see, this task is running. Well, if you click on it, you can see that this task corresponds to the sensor and so it will run until the task T1 from the DAG slave underscore DAG finished. So back to the DAGs. If we schedule the DAG slave underscore DAG and refresh the page, you can see that the DAG run is running. 
refresh again. The task is finished. And if we keep refreshing the page, the diagram of the master underscore dag succeeded as well and so the sensor. Let me show you what happened. First, notice that both DAGs have the same execution date, which is equal to 1.35 pm. Then, if you click on the tasks, and go to the sensor, then logs, you can see here, that the sensor was poking for the task T1 in the DAG slave underscore DAG on the following execution date at 1.35 pm. So it means that the sensor was waiting for the task T1 to succeed at 1.35 pm before moving to the next task and succeed as well. If we take a look at the task instances of the DAG slave underscore DAG, we can see that the task T1 succeeded at 1.35 pm and so the sensor was able to move forward. Ok, let me give you a quick sum up with a schema. So both DAGs started at the same execution date, which was 1.35 pm. So the sensor was running. And it was waiting for the task T1 from DAG B to succeed at 1.35 pm. So we could say does the task T1 succeeded at 1.35 pm. Once the task T1 succeeded, the sensor succeeded as well and the task T2 can be triggered. Alright, that was a pretty basic example, so let me show you a more complex one. Let's say that DAG A and DAG B share the same start date, which is set to 1.35 pm. So let's put the start date here. And we do the same for the DAG B. We assume that the two DAGs start the same day at 1.35 pm. Now let's imagine that the start date of the DAG B is set to 1.32 pm instead of 1.35. What will happen? Well, the execution date of the first DAG1 will be at 1.32 pm. And so the task 1 of DAG B will succeed at 1.32 pm as well. And now we have a big problem. Indeed, the DAG A will still be run at 1.35 pm, and so the sensor will still try to fetch the task 1 at 1.35 pm to see if it succeeded or not. The problem is, the task 1 from DAG B will never complete at 1.35 pm, but at 1.32 pm. Even for the next DAG run of DAG B, the task 1 will succeed at 1.37 pm, and the sensor will look at 1.34 pm if the task 1 succeeded. So you will end up with many sensors running indefinitely. How can we fix that? Well, that's where we need to use the parameter execution underscore delta of the external task sensor. Indeed, if you take a look at the source code, you can see here that the parameter execution delta corresponds to the time difference with the previous execution to look at. So in our case, we would like to have the sensor looking at 1.32 pm and not 1.35 pm. To do this, we will only need to set the parameter execution delta to a time delta object of 3 minutes. Like that. By doing this, the execution date here will be 1.32 pm and so the sensor will be able to see that the task 1 succeeded and it won't get stuck anymore. Ok, so let me show you the two DAGs with the different start dates. Here the master DAG has a start date at 8.48 pm, as you can see here. The schedule interval is set so that the DAG will be triggered every 3 minutes. 
And if we take a look at the slave DAG, the start date is set at 8.46 p.m. with the schedule interval at 3 minutes as well. So since the start dates are different by 2 minutes, I set the execution underscore delta parameter with a time delta object 2 minutes. So let's see what we will get. As you can see, I already scheduled the two DAGs. So let's refresh the page. A first DAG run at 8.46 p.m. has been successfully executed as you can see here. Now let's wait for the DAG run of the master DAG to start. And as you can see here, the first DAG run of the DAG master underscore DAG is triggered at 8.48 p.m. Now let's refresh the page. And the DAG run has been successfully executed. Let's take a look at the logs of the sensor. If you click on the sensor and go to the logs, you can see here that the sensor was looking at the execution date at 8.46 p.m. if the task T1 of the slave DAG succeeded or not. Notice that the two minutes we defined in the parameter execution underscore delta have been well applied as you can see here. Since the execution date of the master DAG was at 8.48 p.m. and here, the POC was at 8.46 p.m., so two minutes less. Back to the DAGs. If we check the tree view of the slave DAG, we can see here from the run field that indeed the task T1 of the slave DAG succeeded at 8.46 p.m. All right, there are two things that I would like to talk about. First, let your DAGs being scheduled automatically and not try to run them manually. Otherwise, you will end up with inconsistencies in your execution dates and so you will not have the same behavior as me. The second important point is that the schedule intervals of your DAGs must be equal. So you can have different start dates, but the schedule intervals have to be the same. Otherwise, even by setting the parameter execution underscore delta, you won't get the behavior that you expect. Let me show you this. In this example, the two DAGs, slave underscore DAG and master underscore DAG, shared the same start date. The only difference was between the schedule intervals where slave underscore DAG was triggered every two minutes and master underscore DAG was triggered every five minutes. So as you can see here, the first DAG run was executed at 4.02 p.m., the second one at 4.04 p.m., the third one at 4.06 p.m., and so on. Now, if we take a look at the master underscore DAG, we can quickly see that there was a problem. Indeed, since the difference between the start dates was 3 minutes, the parameter execution underscore delta was set to a time delta object of 3 minutes. So basically, the first sensor here was looking for a success of the task T1 from the slave DAG at 3.52 p.m. The next one at 3.57 and the third one, which succeeded, at 4.02 p.m. Well, if you do the math, you will see that at every 5 minutes, minus 3, the sensor will be able to complete only half the time, and so the others will run indefinitely. Keep in mind that each sensor takes a slot from the default pool, and so at some point, you will not be able to run any tasks anymore. That's why you should always set the parameter execution underscore timeout to your external task sensors. Alright, that's it for this video, I hope you learned a lot. If you want to support my work, go check my Patreon page, or if you want to learn more about Airflow, you will find my 12 hours course on Udemy in the description below. So have a good day, take care, bye bye.